You know, there are many things that you expect to find in an ocean, or even just on the edge of it here. Shells, for example. I guess there's fish, sand, obviously, seaweed, but uh, robots? Hi, I'm Ryan Smith, an underwater roboticist at the Queensland University of Technology. And this is one of my many underwater vehicles. They are not only great fun, but also really useful for explaining and understanding the principles and challenges behind creating and controlling underwater robots. So why do we need underwater robots, besides the fact that I think they're cool? Underwater robots can make great scientific research tools. They can be sent to places people can't go or used to monitor a whole range of different ocean conditions, gathering data over a long time scale. They are often used to collect information on such things as ocean acidification, algal blooms, ocean currents, and ocean temperature. What really interests me is how these vehicles are controlled, how they move through the ocean, and how much autonomy we can give them. Today's vehicles are usually operated either actively or passively. This Lego vehicle that I'm controlling here is a good example of an actively actuated underwater vehicle. This vehicle can be steered wherever you want it to go, either remotely or autonomously. My research focuses on autonomous underwater vehicles. By autonomous, I mean the vehicle can make its own decisions. The advantages of active control are greater accuracy and maneuverability. However, constant operation of propellers requires a lot of energy, which means limited time underwater. On the other hand, passively actuated vehicles use the natural forces of gravity and buoyancy to locomote through the water. By successively rising and sinking through the water column, autonomous gliders move through the ocean using very little energy. This does mean significant drifting with uncertain ocean currents, but such a vehicle is suited for larger scale research over long time scales. They can remain at sea for anywhere between one month for a glider and up to four years for an autonomous float, depending upon their energy use. Comparing the two control systems is like comparing a hot air balloon to an airplane. I'm interested in exploiting the energy efficiency of the air balloon with the maneuverability of an airplane, or creating a hybrid underwater vehicle. Imagine if I could deploy a robot into the Brisbane River, just outside my lab at QUT. It would navigate down the river to the ocean in a hybrid active and passive mode, then operate in glider mode up the coast to the Great Barrier Reef, which is over a thousand kilometers away. The system would switch to active mode to conduct the research survey, and then return back to Brisbane when everything is done. The journey may take many months, but would open a whole new paradigm of research for ocean scientists. And it all started with tinkering with a few little toys. Well, I still do that. <laughs>